The Reddit fueled rally in the likes of GameStop, BlackBerry, AMC, and others prompted no fee trading platform Robinhood and others to limit its users' ability to buy stocks on their platform. Meanwhile, here in Canada, Wealth Simple did no such thing. Investors continue to be able to trade freely in those stocks. And that helped drive the Made in Canada trading platform to the top of the App Store. For more, we're joined by Mike Ketchen, co founder and CEO of Wealth Simple. Mike, thanks so much for being with us. I'd love for you to just take me uh, into what it's been like for your company over the past week or so, maybe longer, mm -hmm. as you've watched the activity in these stocks and the kind of conversations and decisions you decided to take and make around whether or not your customers were allowed to trade in them. Sure. Well, thanks so much for having me, Amber. And you know, it's uh, this last week comes on the back of uh, what has been a very big year for retail trading across the industry. Um, you know, there's no uh, surprise that COVID has been a huge boon for this industry, which is just seeing record volumes. Um, and then add on top uh, just the tremendous retail demand that has taken place in the last week with stocks like GME and AMC um, being driven by this unprecedented retail demand. It's, it's really remarkable. I mean, from our perspective, even on top of the volumes that we've seen, uh, well, simple trade has catapulted to the number one spot in the app store overall. Uh, we're seeing signups, you know, um, north of 50% higher than they were last week. Uh, volumes on a daily basis more than two times higher than they were, and uh, a really unprecedented demand for for investing. Are you concerned about the risks that investors are taking on through your platform and, and what are you doing about that? We are and I think we take the responsibility to equip investors with the knowledge they need to be thoughtful and responsible very seriously. And so we've done a number of things in the last few days to try to get ahead of this um, as people um, are trading on, on the fear of missing out and, and on an emotional basis. Uh, we sent out emails reminding people about the, the risks associated with speculation. We've embedded in-app notifications for people that are looking at these stocks, reminding them that if they do want to trade them, there is an enormous amount of risk that they're taking um, in this kind of a market environment. And our position as a company, especially in the brokerage market, is where we can't offer financial advice is that we want people to arm themselves with the knowledge they need to be successful, to be aware of the risks. Ultimately, if people are taking calculated risks and want to join in on the fun, but are doing it in a responsible way with an amount of their portfolio that they can effectively lose um, if and when these, uh, these stock prices do come down, that's okay. But we want to make sure that people are being responsible and we're trying to be as proactive as we can about that messaging. Try to understand this new world of finance and you hear about the democratization of financial markets. You know, that's that's in part been your rallying cry as you've built this business. You know, why do you have to, as an investor, pay the kind of commissions? Uh, why can't you, uh, as someone who wants to be able to buy and sell on your phone, uh, use technology that is at your fingertips? Um, I can't imagine you could have ever uh, anticipated a pandemic where everyone would basically be stuck at home and you would see a surge there. And then this other ripple effect here where you just have this growing group of online investors who, who, who seem to be driven uh, by a different narrative than what we have traditionally seen in the, vet, uh, in the markets. Um, so what's your take on that? I mean, are there days where you feel overwhelmed? The, the CEO of Robinhood to, told Bloomberg yesterday that he just felt like uh, Clorox, you know, in the early days of the pandemic. It's nice to have demand, but it's it's hard to anticipate overwhelming demand. I mean, there's, there's no question about that. Um, you know, we've seen uh, our peers in the brokerage industry across North America struggle to keep up with downtime across the industry. And we've been very fortunate that we have avoided that to date. Um, you know, we have an incredible team that is working remarkably hard to deliver on what we think our responsibility is, is to deliver a reliable and safe investment platform um, and then to educate our clients. And so I think we've done that really well, but uh, the Clorox analogy is, is right. The, the demand is unprecedented. And speaking with people that have been in this industry for 30 years, 
um, I don't think anyone's seen, seen this kind of a demand this quickly um, in the past. It, it is remarkable. And to go back to your point, I think that, you know, for me at, at the highest level, um, demand in investing is an important thing. You know, we, we started this company six years ago with the belief that giving people the tools to be smarter about their finances, to start investing so that they could achieve long-term financial freedom is a really important thing. And, and people can start anywhere along that spectrum. So I think a, a boom in demand is such a great thing, you know, for the industry. However, as we talked about just before, there are real risks. And I think we have to walk that fine line of using this opportunity to bring more and more people into the capital markets and into the opportunity of investing and what that can mean for their financial futures, but to also remember that investing carries risks and uh, it does require thoughtfulness, a long-term thinking, and um, it's, it's a remarkable and unprecedented period. Well, given that in every new day where you see all this activity in the market, um, it feels more like a moment um, for those who are trying to sort of push past it and say, well, it's one stock, it's one day, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what would you like to see going forward? Because literally in real time right now, we are seeing some of the, the best known, very vocal investors who have had a different approach, selling stocks short, literally changing their strategy overnight. Um, what kind of conversation do you want to see in this country around everything from, call it short selling, to regulation for a new age of investing? I think that's a great question. I mean, for us, the the principles that matter most here are are about investor protections. And in the brokerage industry, you know, you have to respect that people can make their own decisions. So this isn't about controlling people and telling them what they can and can't do. But you have to find the right ways to educate them and make people aware of the risks. And I think that uh, a regulatory regime that understands it, and by the way, it extends beyond uh, just the securities regime and into crypto where you're seeing also unprecedented amounts of demand. It is also a highly speculative currency um, or speculative uh, you know, type of um, investment vehicle that people are accessing right now. And um, we need the same level of principles-based regulation that puts the investor protections first. Uh, that's all about equipping people with the information they need to make informed and responsible decisions. And so I'd love to see more of that. Um, across the industry and consistently applied across the industry to take advantage of this unprecedented demand, which could be such a force for good for people in the long term, um, but needs to be tempered by that understanding that markets go up, markets also come down, and people need to be prepared for that. One of the things that this frenzy has exposed in, in apps like Robinhood, but also you know the likes of interactive brokers, um, is just... Uh, you know, how vulnerable they were to just market structures, the fact that their clearing houses were requiring more collateral that they were, than they were able to currently put up. And so they are saying that's one of the reasons that they had to st uh, stop the trading. And I'm curious, could you maybe tell us more about how Wealth Simple is set up? Was that a consideration? Is that something that could happen at Wealth Simple that could ultimately force you to potentially stop trading, at least temporarily, in some of these stocks? That's a great question. And, and there's, I think, been a lot of misinformation around this, um, driving a lot of the narrative that you do see on the internet. But from, from the Wealth Simple perspective, we see our role as, as, as really providing a safe and reliable um, brokerage platform for people. And we don't plan to restrict trading in, in any of these securities. Um, we look to the regulators to tell us if they are going to be halting securities. We'll take our cues from them, but we won't be making those deci decisions ourselves. And I think one of the things that is different and unique about Wellsimple is today we do not have margin or options on the platform. And a lot of the source exposure that these US brokerages are facing and, and why you've seen just um, the need for capital injection um, it comes down to the margin and options exposure uh, in the industry and some of the risks that that presents. But none of that exists in the Well Simple story, uh, in the Well Simple structure. And so we have a very different mm -hmm. position in the market. We're incredibly, you know, fortunate to be in a very strong place. And um, as I said, we see our responsibility as simply providing uh, a safe and reliable brokerage. And we will be looking to the regulators um, rather than making any of those decisions our, ourselves.